This episode is for the 13th day of the month of Kislev. It is dedicated in memory of Chana Golda Basar Betovia, my great-grandmother, whose yard site is on the 13th of Kislev. We are in the middle of chapter 26, discussing the laws of the mourner's Kaddish. Today we'll be doing paragraph 13 to the end of the chapter, paragraph 22. So actually, paragraph 13 we're going to skip because that is also going with the who has which order, who has the rights to say Kaddish in a shul, which they're only allowing one person to say Kaddish. And we'll go to paragraph 14. So we're familiar with Kaddish that within 12 months, for the 12 months after a parent passes away, then a child says Kaddish as a merit for the parent's neshama, for the parent's soul. Another thing that a child is supposed to do if they're able to is to lead services. And says the Kiddush Aruch, this leading services is even a, big, a greater merit for the soul of a parent than saying Kaddish. So if somebody is able to do that, that's fantastic. Now let's say you have two people in shul who are both who are both in 12 months of the parents passing. Who gets the right to lead the services? So that gets very complicated. If they can't just figure it out on their own, they should go to the rabbi's rabbi side. Some shuls do have, they'll have by the shtender, by the by the lectern up front, or the chazan, or the leader, or the, congate, the one leading the prayers, where they stand, they'll sometimes have their, like a list of priority of who goes first, who goes second, in regards to the rights to lead the congregation in prayer. Something to note, however, is that this only applies during the week. On Shabbos, on holidays, then we're not supposed to have somebody who's within 12 months of a parent's passing be the leader f- for the prayers. The exception is if somebody always has, somebody's job is to be the chazan, or if not on a regular Shabbos, at least on, very often you have somebody who's the designated chazan for the high holidays or something of that sort. So if they're within 12 months of a parent passing, even though normally they would not be praying, they would not be leading the services on Shabbos and the holidays, since that's their, they, that's, they always do that every single year, then they could do it this year as well. Paragraph 15. I really already mentioned this, that if you have two people who are mourning for a parent and they both only need services, then the, the rabbi, the, the rabbi should be the one to decide, the gabbai should be the one to decide if there's no set rules of who has priority. Of course, it's also a merit for a parent who passed away, it's a merit for the soul, that you gave up the rights to, the, to lead the services. That, that itself is a merit for a parent's soul. So if you do end up in a position where you can't lead the services because somebody else is there, don't feel bad, that's fantastic as well. Now, there are different parts of the service are able to be led by different chazans. So if you do have one or two or three mourners there, then you can have the first part up to, through through the Pesuket Zimra section, led by one chazan. You can have the blessings of Kriya Shema through the repetition of Shema Esri and Tachnan, led by a second chazan. And the last, last section of the service, from Ashrei and on, Ashrei, Valtzion and on, you can have by a third chazan. So there are ways to divide it up amongst that, up to three chazans. Mincha, afternoon service and evening service, those cannot be divided up. That would have to be one person all the way through. Paragraph 16. Let's say you have two mourners in shul. One is mourning one parent and the other, the other one is within 12 months of both parents passing away. Which one gets priority? Do we say that because this one is mourning two parents, he has priority? Says the Kitzvah Shachan Nope. They're both still on equal footing and the rabbi has to decide or the rabbi has to decide or they have to go with the, pre, the pre-decided the uh, order of priority. Paragraph 17. We explained earlier that the reason why we say Kaddish is that Samaritan case, God forbid, one of our parents who passed away is going through a rough time in Gehenim, in hell, then saying Kaddish helps bring them out of that and into heaven. Now, the longest somebody, a soul, could end up in hell, hell in Judaism does exist, but it is not a eternal uh, punishment. It is a temporary thing. The goal of hell is if we didn't do our job properly in life, then we have to go to hell through to, to rectify the mistakes that we made while we were alive, and then we get to join everybody else in heaven. Again, this gets more complicated into how the afterlife works. It's not really it's not really the, the full-fledged heaven right away. It's more of a waiting room for our souls um, until we get to the eventual heaven. That's beyond the scope of this discussion. But regardless, Gehenim, hell in Judaism is not is uh, it's only a temporary it's only a temporary place where a soul may end up, and the maximum amount of time a, per, a soul would ever end up there is twelve months. So therefore, there's never reason to say Kaddish more than 12 months. However, if somebody would say Kaddish for a, for, for a full 12 months, it's as if they're saying that their parent was so horrible that they're going to be they're, they're, they're in Gehenim for the entire maximum time possible. And so it's not so appropriate to say that about one's parent. And therefore, the custom is to stop after 11 months. 
Now, where do you count the 11 months from? Do you count it from the day that the person died or from the day that they were buried? So if they were buried within a day when they died, which is what we try to do, then you go from the day that they died. However, sometimes a burial could be delayed by a few days, even more sometimes even. So then you go by the date of the burial, not from when they died, because the, at the judgment that we face after you pass away doesn't begin until we're buried. And therefore, if the burial takes place a good few days after, even two or three days after the person passed away, we need 11 months of when they're being, uh, of the judgment, uh, of the punishment time, so to speak, not from the day of death itself. Now, in Judaism, we have leap years, which include an extra month. So some years will have 13 months instead of 12 months. What do you do for those, for, for those, if, if it falls out in those years? Do you do, say, Kaddish for 12 months, but you're not doing the full year? Or do you say Kaddish for 11 months? So the answer is do Kaddish for 11 months, even though it's going to be another two months until the yard state itself, because now you have two months off, so to speak. Still, Kaddish is only said for 11 months, regardless of, the, if, of if it's a 12-month year or a 13-month year. The Kiddush HaKan ends off this paragraph saying that if somebody knows that their parent was really a really rotten guy that has a good chance of ending up in Gehenna and hell for a full 12 months, then it is fine and maybe appropriate say, to, to say Kaddish for the entire 12 months and to not stop after 11 months. If anyone thinks that there is such a scenario, they definitely should speak it over with the rabbi before deciding such a thing on their own. Paragraph 18, the Kiddush HaKan says that even in those shuls where there were where the custom was that only one person says Kaddish at a time, he says that if there it does end up in shul, even in those shuls, you know, a whole bunch of people saying Kaddish, in order to prevent fights breaking out that somebody's not going to have a chance to say Kaddish for, for a parent, then even in those shuls, they should allow two or three mourners to say Kaddish together. I just want to mention over here that many shuls, nowadays, like I mentioned previously, that most all the shuls that I'm familiar with, they allow every, anyone who wants to say Kaddish, no matter how, how many people it is, you'll sometimes end up in a shul where you have one person saying Kaddish at one speed over here, a person in the back of the shul saying Kaddish at a little bit faster, a little bit slower, and they're not singing it using together. Therefore, if possible, they should try going near each other, and you'll see this in some shuls, whoever's saying Kaddish will go to the bima, to the middle of the shul, and stand next to each other when they're saying Kaddish to make sure everyone's staying on pace. That definitely is an appropriate thing to do. Paragraph 19. Let's say you end up at a minion and there's no mourners there, nobody's saying Kaddish. What do you do then? So many shuls have the custom that somebody will say Kaddish just to fit it into the into the uh, service because we have a spot for it in the service. Um, but it depends on the custom of the shul. Sometimes some shuls will have only one of the Kaddish has said, some shuls will have all the Kaddish has said. But who's supposed to say that Kaddish? So that Kaddish, Kaddish should only be said by somebody who already lost a parent. If somebody has parents, it's not so appropriate to say Kaddish because it's kind of like saying, you know, I wish my parent was dead or something of like that sort, God forbid. Um, if someone's parents say to them, I don't mind if you say Kaddish even though I'm alive, and they have the parents' full permission, then it's not an issue for them to say Kaddish even if the parents are alive. Paragraph 20. Can a daughter say Kaddish for a parent or only a son? So this depends on the shuls. Some shuls do allow the ladies to say Kaddish. Some shuls, they don't, they don't have ladies saying Kaddish. So just make if you, if there if somebody if there is a lady that wants to say Kaddish for a parent, just make sure that she checks out with the shul beforehand what the policy is whether she she could say Kaddish there or not. Paragraph twenty one. Another time that we say Kaddish. So far, I've been talking about the year after more the year after the parent passed away. But every year on the yard site, we're supposed to say Kaddish as well for a parent that passed away. If somebody is traveling or they're, they're in a place that there's no minion on the yard site of a parent, but they do have a chance to get a minion. The evening service following the yard site, because the yard site goes according to the Jewish day, so it starts at sunset and ends at sunset. So sunset is now over, the day the yard site is over, but that night they'll be at an evening service, it'll be a minion. They shall say Kaddish that evening by the minion. Paragraph 22. The Kiddush HaKanarach ends off this section saying that even though saying Kaddish is phenomenal for the souls of parents that have passed away, leading service is phenomenal, the most important thing is to live a life a Jewish life full of meaning and mitzvahs and connecting to God. Anything that a child does is on, if, for the good or for the bad, the parents get some credit for that and therefore get a lot of credit for that. And therefore, if the parent is living an upstanding life, taking care, involved in the community, studying Torah, in general praying, connect to Hashem, then that would be the best thing that a child could do for a parent that passed away. Rabbi Gross always says that we have the opportunity to send care packages, so to speak, to our to the to their to our parents and past generations, when we do mitzvahs and we are, we're involved in proper good causes, then we're, we're sending care patch, packages. Are the souls of those that, that departed before us, of our, of our family and relatives before us, they they get married, they, they get a, a care package. They're they're their place 
in heaven is gets higher and, and better and more rewarding because of our actions down here. So says the Kitzer, Kaddish is great and important, living service is great and important, but the way we live our lives is also just as important, actually even more important. Have a wonderful day and see you on the next episode.